A look from earlier as the Nets head to the locker room. They're in no mood to let this game get away from them on their home turf. Thanks for spending your Friday afternoon with 2K Sports and the NBA. Joined by Chris Weber and Grant Hill, our reporter Ali LaForce, this is Brian Anderson. And in that March stretch, some interesting things going on in the East. Taking a look at Philadelphia, they've been outstanding thus far, claiming the top spot in their conference. And of course, Brooklyn, nipping at their heels in second place and wanting to get that first seed. I think for the Nets, I recall them having a lot of naysayers at the start of the season, but now they may not have any. This team is ready for a deep playoff run. You know, that's the mindset you have to have. They know if they can get to the playoffs, they have the talent to do some real damage. And we have a minute to catch up with our reporter. What do you have for us, Allie? Well, Kevin Durant joined a super team, and then he left it. So what exactly is he looking for? He said, quote, how can I be at my best? That's a journey and a battle in itself. Can this environment help me? Am I still learning? Am I having fun? That's always been the approach. Guys, it is his right to pursue that quest wherever it may lead him. All right, thanks a lot, Allie. Well, both teams come into this game rolling. It's a hot ticket for the fans in attendance tonight, Grant. Hot in DBA. This is exactly what the fans are looking for. This is what you and I are looking for. Two teams that are playing their best basketball of the season, meeting up, matching up, going at it in this game. Now, we know one won't be hot afterwards, but this is the kind of game that you look forward to throughout the course of the season. Now a look at Philadelphia's starting lineup. Harrison Embiid make up the front court. Matisse Thibel out there with Ben Simmons. And it's Green in at the three slot. And for the Nets, Harris the three with Durant at the four. Kyrie Irving out there with James Harden. And it's Lopez in at the center position. Now here's Irving. So versatile on offense. Averaging around 23 and a half points per contest. Now here's Simmons. Pass to Harris. Now Embiid. Another shot. And he lays it up and in. He seems to have a sense for where misses are going. Embiid so fantastic at getting ideal positioning on the glass. Now here's Irving. He had 25 points in his last game. Hart from outside. Rebounded by Green. Now the 76ers with it. This game coming on the heels of their win versus the Knicks. And Harris throws it down. That's the savvy veteran Green. He's able to spot when his teammates aren't being covered. That's a nice read right there. Pass to Durant. Let's it go from deep. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Their last encounter was in Philadelphia. Outside title. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. Yeah, and you have to credit him being with how he plays. Goes right at players on both ends of the floor. Never backs down from a challenge at the rim. First free throw is good. And with Embiid, he's been on a few posters, right? But that doesn't deter him. No, Embiid brushes it off and looks to throw it down on you on the other end. You love having that mentality from your defensive end. And Embiid drops them both. Oh, you can get spoiled watching him at the line. I mean, you just expect him to make every one, every time. Things just don't seem to be clicking for them offensively. Yeah, they really need to find a way to get back on track. Now here's Irving. And he connects with a jumper. You see how quickly Irving gets off the ground. He's a confident scorer from any area on the court. Here's Simmons. Pass to Harris. To the paint. Here's Embiid, bearing his second of three attempts. 
starting to find his rhythm. He's cooking, and he knows it. Yeah, that's because he's getting his number called early. I mean, he's doing his part to help carry them offensively. Now here's Irving. Three-pointer, Harden. Can't hit it. He's 0 for 2 now. For Philadelphia, they've gone 3 of 4 to get things going. Pass to Thibel. Back to Green. Embiid inside. Working on Lopez. And the basket by Embiid. <laughs> They're really working the paint now. The Nets have gone 1 of 4 to start. Harden, the pass to Durant. And here in the first, approaching three minutes play. Harris with it. Durant covering. The shot is good. The D hasn't been quick enough to react to the ball inside. That's helped cause this run. Irving with it. Pass to Harden. Driving to the basket. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Well, they said Hero Ball was dead, and then the ball came to the talk so deadly as an isolation score. He's become an offense unto himself. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. And the way Harden creates a shot single-handedly, you know, he's assisted on less than one in five of his made shots, c -Web. Listen, B.A., Harden is about give me the ball and get out of my way. You might have to go back to Wilt Chamberlain to find the last time a team built their whole offense around that tactic. That one's no good. You know, uh, this one award that Harden's won, I think we can pretty much say for sure he'll never win again. That's six man of the year. It's hard to believe there was ever a time this man wasn't the star. Now here's Thibel. He's averaging almost five points a game. Boy, I like their energy coming in. <laughs> Terrific execution so far. Going for the juggler right off the bat. I mean, jumping out to an impressive early lead. And again, it's the Nets missing. <laughs> and I'm surprised that didn't go down. I mean, I'm sure he is too. Simmons finds green. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Defensively, they've got to get more bodies Martin. in the paint. That's three straight field goals from below the free throw line. Time called here. The Mets decide to talk it over now. And one of the most valuable aspects of Danny Green is his defense. He's gotten it done on that end of the floor his whole career. It's what makes him so valuable in the win. Now here's Durant. Looking for his first basket still in this one. That one falls. Durant does such a good job of getting high percentage offensive plays. I mean, you, you can see that over the years. Outside, green. Pass to Embiid. Outside for green. Just three to shoot. From deep, here's Simmons. Rebounded by the Nets. A Chris with Danny Green. He'll do everything he can to badger an assignment. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just petty stuff like standing too close to him, grabbing the dead balls, holding their arms, and holding their jerseys. I mean, those things can get in your head, under your skin, and throw you off again. Now here's Embiid. Last game with 30. Right wing. Shoots over Lopez. Embiid can't hit. I like what he's trying to do. Shaking the D with the fadeaway. Tough look. Irving for three. And it's Harris with the rebound. And he almost made them regret defending him so loosely. Outside Simmons. Pass to Harris. Back to Simmons. Simmons. Really 
taking charge of the game, largely with a detailed interior attack. They decided to pound the ball inside, using their physicality to set the tone. Now here's Harden in his last outing with 12 points. Harris on the wing, green covering. Harris right side. Over green. And that one's long. Oh, you expect him to make those. They gotta do more to get a hand in his face next time. To the left wing. Embiid against Lopez. Pass to Green. And here's Harris. Back to Green. Late clock. The Sixers need to put one up here. And they turn it over. Shot clock violation as the buzzer sounds. Now we get a chance to check some stats for him. And for an idea of where his offense is right now, take a look at his true shooting percentage decreasing over the last five games. He desperately needs to find his stroke tonight. Now Irving. Pass to Harden. The ball's knocked loose. It's stolen by Green. Bible with it. Harden picks him up. Here's Simmons. Okay, okay, finish! How can you not love Simmons? I mean, some of the dunks he pulls off are insane. Harden misses. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 2 from outside. Outside Simmons. Pass to Harris. Dybul on the wing. And rejected! I have to be careful around those hands. He's selling it time to win a leap up to block shots. And here is Irving. Harden from outside. Dybul with the board. The defense has done a good job of forcing him to the tough shots this game. Harris misses. And for the Nets, their shooting has not been great early. Just 27%. Harris outside. Just five on the clock. To stop the drought. The shot comes out. Excellent D there from Embiid. Now here's Simmons. Ten points in his last outing. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Lopez. And there's Embiid. Time that out, one's out. good. And the assist by Green. Even with the D giving him a lot of attention, he's still finding ways to light him up. here. Green's checked in for Lopez. Shamit comes in for Harris. Brown, he's checked in for James Harden. And it's Dinwiddie in for Kyrie Irving. Well, Grant, you won the Rookie of the Year, so you kind of avoided the rookie wall. Is it a real thing this time of the season? NBA, <laughs> it is a real thing indeed. Now, I won Coach Rookie of the Year with Jason Kidd, but I still hit the wall. I started off hot, came out first 20 games, averaging 20 plus a game. And then by mid to late December, whoo, my legs got heavy, I was fatigued and tired. But the reality is the NBA season is 82 games. And in college, you play about 30 games. Well, you play those 30 games in the league in the first six to eight weeks. So yes, the rookie wall is real, and it usually happens this time of the year. And there's a three second violation. A fantastic mobile one block. This one deserves another look. <laughs> you know, just determined to protect the lead with all the effort they've got. Superb anticipation on that block. Get there, get there. Here's Dinwiddie. Playing Milwaukee, he was nearly unstoppable. Switch, 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 switch. Pass to Durant. Green, a screen. Their offense stone cold. Another miss there. 
no question who's in control of the board so far. Here's Maxi. Now quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Well, this is the chemistry Howard has with his guys. Fantastic at realizing when to go for Alley. Now here's Brown. It's a 16-point game. Pass to Dinwiddie. And they're going to count that bucket. And they'll send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. The value of good ball movement isn't lost on this squad. How about Spencer Dinwiddie, a player who had to carve his own path in the NBA? He didn't get a lot of chances as the 38th pick in the 2014 draft, Grant. And what's fascinating, B.A., is Dinwiddie looked like an end-of-the-bench type of player for his first four years. And then all of a sudden, something clicked. He's been a scoring threat ever since. He plays fearless with the ball in his hands and never second-guesses his ability. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 2 from outside. Brown against Curry. Stolen! Left side, Green. Pass to Brown. Goes up and lays it in nice and easy. And they may have talked about shot selection coming into this. Curry with it. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game from him. And it's Maxi missing. Dinwiddie, right side. Duran with it. The three. Brown can't hit. You can't hit that one. Your teammates are going to think twice about feeding you the next time. Pass to Howard. Out to the right wing. Here's Embiid. No good that time. So Brooklyn will take it the other way. They defeated Milwaukee in their last game. Talk about strong offensive production. They went out, played to their strengths, and were successful as a result. As long as you do that, you put yourself in a good position to win, no matter if you're home or away. Here's Maxi. A 20-point game for him in the win against New York. And that one drops for him. And this defense needs to turn the screws and ramp up the intensity. They're looking a little loose out there right now. Outside Durant. Beyond the arc. He hits that one. Two for five now. And the way Durant gets his shot off, so, so effortless. Pass to Milton. Here's Curry. Here's Howard. And the shot counts. He's fouled, and it's a chance for a three-point play. from the line. One of the few blemishes on Howard's career. Dinwiddie outside. Here's the three. And the Nets, another three! Their defense has to do a better job of smothering those shooters. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 3 from downtown. Seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Fades. And he comes up with a bucket. Embiid's got 12 points in the game. Some players might wear down during this kind of run. He's only been a strong. Outside Durant. And he was fouled while in the act of shooting, so he'll take two free throws. That's on Joel Embiid. Uh, the length of Durant, I mean... Uh, it makes him almost unstoppable. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Now 
That one's off. Oh, skill, length, time. Durant, he's special in all those categories. He can dominate on both ends. And no luck at the stripe this time. Second one won't fall. Uh, not what you expect out of him. He was uh, due to cool off a little, I guess. The first quarter concludes. And a double-digit lead on the scoreboard. The Sixers on top, up by 12. And back to the start of the second quarter in just a moment. Chatting earlier with Ben Simmons, he addressed the scrutiny that players have to deal with on a daily basis. For me, it, it comes with blocking criticism from people I don't really need to hear from. You know, I don't mind. Everyone has their opinion. Everyone's going to say something, um, which is fine. But at the same time, I got to worry about, you know, what I need to focus on. And with social media now, blocking out the noise has become harder than ever. <laughs> the truth is, people like to criticize others, B.A. We should really be celebrating what Simmons has accomplished at a very young age. Great to have you with us. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck. Plenty of time left in this one. A comfortable margin for the 76ers here, guys. Well, it looks like hitting the boards hard was an emphasis of their attack. They knew how valuable it was to do so. Yeah, governing the split-second chance opportunities. I mean, that's what has them in the lead right now. Taking a look at Philadelphia. We've got Tobias Harris. Seth Curry is out there with Ben Simmons. Then it's Dwight Howard. And it's Korkmaz in at the small forward position. The three, here's Harris. But he recovers it. Back to Simmons. Pass to Harris. Shot clock at five. Second shot opportunity. And there is a whistle. That goes on Tobias Harris. That's his first foul of the game. The Nets shooting only 35% so far. Outside Irving. Pass to Lopez. Here's Denwitty, and he drives in. Boom! He jams it straight down. The big time throwdown. Check him out. Keeps the grip on that rim after the finish. A little extra emphasis. Now here's Harris. He's coming off a 13-point game against the Knicks in New York. Did you see the no-look pass by Harris right there? I mean, he's a wing that knows how to move the ball. Here's Denwitty. Philadelphia grabs the miss. Harris has got his fifth rebound in this one. They've shown the power inside. Their rebounding effort has been sensational. Howard, the screen. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. Yeah, you know, nobody really considers Tobias Harris as an elite defender, but by all accounts, he's an above-average one. Opposing teams know that he's one of the best defenders on their team. No good on the free throw. 11 wingspan for Tobias Harris. That's a big bonus for him on defense. It really is. I mean, and you combine that with Harris's lateral quickness, and you can see the effect he has. Most people gloss over his defense with the eye test, but all the numbers say that he's very much a positive on that end of the floor. And he sinks the second. I mean, you look at their all-around game of Harris. He's even been good for the free throw. Irving, the pass to Lopez. Harris outside. They 
set the screen. A look at how all-star voting is going thus far. And so much fun to see the tallies start to come in. See how things start to look. And you look at Simmons. The fans have pushed him into the top ten in the Eastern Conference voting. And I'm glad they have. This is a guy who deserves to be up there with the rest of those names. It's shaping up to be a terrific all-star weekend. More news to come as we receive it. Now here's Simmons. A valuable part of their offense. Averaging a little more than 16 a game. Rebounded by Lopez. And that's shooting 36% for the game. Not great. Outside Irving. Green. A screen. Shot from 12. And the Nets miss again. He's got a nice feel for that crossover. But you still have to finish. Outside Simmons. Pass to Howard. And it's Howard finishing it off. Great D. Simmons, the passing skills of a point. At 16, he can see the whole court. Up top, Lopez. Outside Irving. Over Simmons. And the Nets miss again. Nice interior defense. Can't give him any space inside or he'll burn. We've got a piece of it. Harris outside. Let's go with a three. He can't hit that time. So Brooklyn will take it the other way. Tells you a little something about their team. They've been able to pull in front despite his troubles tonight. And Dwight Howard picks up the foul. That's his first foul. The 76ers making a switch here. A little under three and a half minutes elapsed here in the second quarter. Irving against Simmons. Hey, it's blocked by Simmons. Oh, such a smart defensive player. He knows how to use his reach to alter shots. For three, here's Harris. Yes, and that's Simmons with the assist. Harris has got four points now in the quarter. The assist numbers certainly stand out. They've really emphasized ball movement here today. On the wing, Green. Now Harden. Consistent production from him. Averaging just over 26 a game. And the Nets miss again. He came out today planning to do as much damage from three-point range as possible. Well, it looks like it's time to change up the plan, guys. Now here's Simmons. 18 points separating these teams. That's the biggest lead of the game. Here's Howard. Ooh, coming through again. Shooting five for seven now. Time and time again, they're creating good looks from close range. Trying to find a spark here. Yes, indeed. A rough stretch offensively. They could really use a basket. And the personality of a head coach can really rub off on a team. So what's your preference, Grant? you like a, a player's coach or you like a coach who lights a fire? Well, B.A., 19 years in the NBA, I've had both. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, as a young player, you like a coach who lights a fire under his guys. And that helps you understand and learn the game and become a better player and a better team. But as you get older, you may like a coach 
who has a different approach, more reserved, uh, doesn't need to push and uh, motivate you the same way. And so I think it's important, though, with a general manager that he understands the makeup of his team, understands what personality is, in, is needed to motivate and resonate with that particular ball throw. That's why the personality of a coach is crucial to a team's success. And let's send it over to Ali LaForce. The league resumed this season with a reduction in revenue, approximately 40% of which usually comes from gate revenues and attendance. That's required compromises from all of the stakeholders. And as eager as everyone is for the return to normality, it's a process and a painful one for the league's pocketbook. Yeah, that's right. Good point, Ali. Thank you. Everyone in the building saw the obvious contact. And he knocks down the first one. Kevin Durant, he's checked in for Brooklyn. He's perfect from the line this time. For Brooklyn, they've gotten only two of eight field goals to go in the second. From downtown, Philadelphia grabs the miss. Outside Milton. The rebound by the Nets. Durant's got four rebounds now. And here's Harden. Pass to Durant, puts up a three, and Milton pulls it down. And this is exactly who you want taking that shot. He just missed it. And there's the foul. It'll go on Joe Harris. That'll be a second foul of the game. That's number two on him already. A third foul before the half, and he may be grabbing some time. And the 76ers making a change here. Embiid's checked in. Split on D. Right side Simmons. Pass to Embiid. It's good. And a beautiful setup from Simmons that time. Embiid's got 14 points for the game. Now here's Irving. Now Durant. And so he draws the foul. Headed to the line to shoot a pair. That one on Harris. Well, the length and lateral quickness of Kevin Durant, it's what makes him an impactful player on both ends of the court. And what I love about him, B.A., is that Durant can defend in the paint and on the perimeter equally as well. He also Shoot has two. great timing when challenging shots. And lately, he has received more credit for his defense, but you feel like he's still slipped on just a little bit. And that one misses. And the Nets making a change here. Shamit's checked in. And he's good on the second. Well, as the league addressed social justice, the big action item became voting. Getting people to the polls, making it more accessible. Chris, why was that so important? Well, with voting, you know, change can occur, and you have a say. And in this democracy, voting is how you change the system. You know, so many people fought for the right, and we need to continue to exercise it. It's great to see that the league is encouraging that. Here's Harden, following the score by Philadelphia. Green finds Harden. And that comes off the assist by Green. Harden's got five points now in the quarter. And Harden loves getting contact with his shots, showing off his true muscle and level of concentration. Down low. Puts up the eight-footer. Here's Embiid. Count it. Now eight for 13 with that basket. Hey, they're just getting pushed around inside. Brooklyn has gone only one of five from beyond the three-point line in the second quarter. Pass to Durant. 
And out of bounds, the 76ers will take it. All right, a quick look now at how the point totals have looked over the last few months for him. And he's been trending downward in terms of his average points per game. And a number of reasons can lead to this. But he needs to figure out how to get back on track. Milton with it. Durant covering. Here's Harris. Back to Milton. Pass to Embiid. He shoots again. Oh, he's looking good tonight. He's drilled 9 of 15 so far. What a finisher Embiid is. He's a pro at not letting the defense dictate to him. Durant for three. The rebound by Embiid. Embiid's got rebound number eight now. He's been cold and it's been hurting him. The D, I mean, was ready for him. He hasn't been able to solve it. Simmons. And stolen by Irving. Wing shot on the way. Durant's shot is off. His bad night from the field is only going to get worse if he keeps throwing up shots like that. Pass to Harris. Dybal on the wing. Outside Simmons. Five to shoot. Over to the wing. Embiid from outside. Kevin Durant pulls it in. Durant's got his fifth rebound in this one. Offensively, it's been a struggle for him. Yeah, they need to string together some shots to have any kind of chance. Three-pointer, Harden. Basket is good. Nice setup for Irving. Harden's got eight points here in the quarter. That's his second three-pointer of this quarter after not getting any in the first. Pass to Embiid. Over Green. Embiid misses. There's a lesson for him. Don't showboat. Tries to get fancy with the fadeaway, and it backfires. Now here's Durant. Tries to break his ice, and he'll draw the foul. He'll head to the line for two. That's on Joel Embiid. The great ones do this. When Kevin Durant gains an advantage inside, you know he's aiming to score or get fouled. And the line for two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls. Brooklyn making some changes. Brown comes in for Harden. And it's Dinwiddie in for Kyrie Irving. And the 76ers making a change here. That one falls. So he hits both of them. Philadelphia has gone just one of four from downtown so far in the second. Simmons, the pass to Harris. Out to the right wing. He tries for three. And the 76ers get it back. That's made a huge difference in this game, if you ask me. Their offensive rebounding has been sensational. And there he is. I mean, attacking the boards, converting off the misses. I mean, trying to do everything he can to secure this W. So active. So energetic. Helping to lead the charge for this team. The shooting has been a bright spot for them. Otherwise, they struggle as a whole. Pass to Embiid. Now Harris. A minute 58 left in the first half of this one. Green against Embiid. Outside Simmons. Shoots from 14, and he hits the jumper. Simmons just got six points. Yeah, you gotta at least uh, contest Simmons uh, from the mid-range. I mean, he has the touch to be effective for me. Pass to Durant. And there's the drive, and Durant with the big finish. That one rocked this arena. That's the kind of dunk right there that makes you think he's gonna rip down the rim. Harris with it, guarded by Duran. Here's Maxi. Here's Embiid. Dinwiddie with a rebound. Green finds Dinwiddie. 103 left in the second quarter. Excellent D there from Embiid. Outside Simmons. 
Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Dinwiddie. Simmons, the pass to Embiid. And then Embiid with the dunk. Proving once again how dominant he is. I mean, once Embiid gets rolling, it's like an avalanche. Dinwiddie outside. And here's Durant. 30 seconds left in the second. Here's Maxi. Pass to Simmons. I got yours, I got yours. For three, here's Harris. Yes. And that's Simmons with the assist. Simmons has got six assists in the game. Outside Durant. Green with a screen on Harris. For three, Durant. So as we conclude the first half, a fairly one-sided game. Sixers ahead, running away with this one. Well, now we have some time to check in with Allie LaForce. Allie. Thanks, guys. Do well. How do you evaluate your performance so far? I think defensively, I'm doing pretty good. Offensively, I still got to work on a lot of stuff. But it's going well. I just got to calm down, slow down, let the game come to me, and we'll be all, all good. With patience, it'll be all good. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Allie. Fantastic interview. We'll be back soon to start the second half of basketball. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Greetings to each and every one of you watching at this very moment. Uh, I'm Ernie Johnson. Kenny the Jet Smith is here. Shaq is here. One half is behind us. Welcome to the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Joel Embiid having an outstanding game. He ended up with 24 points, 9 rebounds, and also 3 steals. He's in a crazy zone right now, and seems to be even hotter than he was in their last game. And from what we saw so far from the Sixers, Kenny, what's your takeaway? When Embiid plays like this, he's the best center in the league. The skill, the physicality, the attitude. He's not just out there to play well, he's looking to intimidate. And over to Shaq, what do you think about Brooklyn? Well, there wasn't much flow in that offense, that's for sure. Guys are forcing shots, not using their teammates. Look, if they're going to make any noise in second half, they're going to shoot the ball better. And it starts with ball movement and shot selection. And it's just about time now for the third quarter to get underway. for the second half here. A big comeback is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. What else can you say? Joel Embiid, an impressive effort here today. Through the first two quarters, he's been on fire. Explosive offensive performance. And, and as they can't slow him down, you know what you do? You keep feeding them and feeding them and feeding them. This is the right game plan. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it's been a runaway. Harris the three with Durant at the four. Kyrie Irving out there with James Harden. And it's Green in at the five. So that's the Nets five. Pass to Embiid. Over Green. And that one hits the back iron. Well, the Nets shooting 34% so far on this one. Durant finds Harden. Now here's Irving. There's the three. The shot off that time. I think he's gone completely dry. Nothing is hitting. Yeah, he just hit a rough patch. He's trying to climb out of it, but he hasn't been successful. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Durant. And now another look at that mobile one block defensive performance. An emphatic rejection. You got to appreciate that kind of forceful defense. Lopez, he's checked in for Green. Lopez. Left side, Thibel. And that'll be Philadelphia's ball as it goes out of bounds. Sixers able to keep the possession.
Here's Simmons. He has six. Green for three. The Sixers again can't hit. And a minute played as the second half gets going. Durant, pass to Lopez. Here's Irving. Simmons defending. And that's good. Irving for three. Irving's got five. Look at that. No hesitation at all from Irving. He's looking to score as soon as he touches the rock. Well, Kyrie Irving, the former top pick from that incredible basketball program at Duke University. Uh, he has grown as a player since he first came into the league. And he has become much smarter with his shots. He knows when to pick his spots out there on the court. Shot clock at six. From deep, here's Simmons. No good there. So Brooklyn will take it the other way. Harden with it. Nine points in the game. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. And with the shot selection of Irving, the last few seasons have been his most efficient as a player. You know, B.A., it, it seems like Kyrie figured out what works best for him. He's matured as a player and knows how to make the most of his chances. This is him distilling the best parts of his offensive arsenal. No good on that one. Well, Grant, you were able to represent the United States on an international stage. Give me a few stories about that experience. Uh, Brian, it was one of the highlights of my career in 1996 in Atlanta to play along with six members from the original Dream Team. Really, truly just one of the best experiences. I got a chance every day to practice with, to go against, to learn from Scottie Pippen when he was in his prime. I just finished my second year in the NBA, uh, and it just truly was a, a remarkable, incredible experience. Gold medal, really, like I said, one of the highlights of my career. The, the, the reach of Embiid, just fantastic. Just throw it up there. I mean, he's committed to finishing the alley. Outside Irving. Pass to Durant. Over Harris. That one a little long. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 2 from outside here on the third. Now Simmons. Oh, Simmons throws it down hard. I mean, that's too easy for Simmons. I mean, the closer he gets to the bucket, the more dangerous he is. Irving, the pass to Durant. Over Harris. That's good from Durant. On the assist by Irving. Durant's got 12. <laughs> I'll tell you, when he rises up to shoot and with his height advantage, oh, he knows he's going to get a clean look. Oh, yeah. It's got to be nice to have that combination of height and skill. You know you can get your shot off pretty much against anyone. For Brooklyn, they've gotten two of four shots to go since the break. Irving finds Durant. From outside the arc. Rebound by the 76ers. And the defense got away with one there. I mean, that's the shot he typically makes. Pass to Harris. Outside title. Now here's Simmons. He's guarded by Irving. Harris outside. Offline with a three. Brooklyn's gone just one of three from deep since the break. Harris with the drive. Now Harden. Outside Durant. Harden with a screen on Harris. Let's it go from 14. That doesn't go either for Durant. The 76ers have gotten just three of eight shots to go in the third quarter. Pass to Embiid. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Lopez. Six to shoot. Simmons, the pass to Embiid. The Sixers again can't hit. You gotta move past that one. 
mean, they want him to take that again. You're exactly right. That's the kind of shot you're trying to work for at the offensive end. Three-pointer, Harden. And the Nets miss again. Philadelphia has got nothing to fall from outside in this third quarter. Let's check in with our reporter, Allie LaForce. Brian, with the pandemic, player workouts going into the draft were restricted. Instead, a lot of video chat interviews and even IQ tests. Players completing timed exercises, testing their memory and skills. Whether or not you believe the game is 90% mental, it's obviously an important component. Truly is. Thanks, Allie. Good stuff. Now here's Simmons. He's got 10. Howard's shot's good. Howard's got 13 points. And they've really managed to dominate inside. They've been having major problems offensively. Definitely in a bit of a dry spell. Brooklyn calls timeout. There's just a lot of wide open lanes to the rim here. <laughs> That'll drive your coach nuts. Poor rotation, really slow help, and just not enough toughness on the interior. They've got a lot to talk about. in the game. Pass to Durant. Lopez, the screen on Embiid. Durant drives in. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. Grant, you played until the age of 40. That's becoming a rare feat in the NBA. It really is, B.A. And I think in part, you have players who've entered the league a lot younger. Back when I came into the league, it was, you know, typically after your third or fourth year in college, players were a little bit older, so they started later. But now players are coming in as teenagers, essentially, and it's the cumulative effect, the wear and tear over the 82-game season. You know, not everyone's going to play 20 years, get to the age of 40, uh, but still, nonetheless, you have some great players in this league who've had tremendous longevity even until their late 30s. He hits the second from the line. Philadelphia has gotten nothing to fall from outside in this third quarter. Right side, Milton. And the ball out of play. The Nets will have it. And now a chance to see what's coming up for the Philadelphia 76ers. On Sunday, they'll face off against Kyle Lowry and the Toronto Raptors. And then on Wednesday, they'll face off against Anthony Davis and the Los Angeles Lakers. And you know for that matchup with the Warriors, it's going to be a hard-fought battle. You just hope they are able to execute their game plan as it should be a close one. Sinks the tray. Harden's got 13 points. Harden attempts more threes than just about anyone, and, and you don't get that kind of leeway unless you want to crown. Here's Milton. Rebounded by the Nets. Durant's got nine rebounds in the game. Boy, he's getting it done. Outside Irving. Pass to Harden. Good D by Simmons. I love to see the defense exhibit some passion and protect the rim right there. Here's Embiid. 
from the arc. It's good. And a beautiful setup from Simmons that time. Embiid's got 29 points. Brooklyn's gone two for five from three since halftime. Now here's Harden. Defense is right there. Well, he has to work harder to get a good high percentage look. I mean, he's been taking some bad shots out there. Here's Cork Moss. Boy, he's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Off target from three-point range. Well, the Nets shooting a less than average 27% in the third quarter. He hasn't been able to find his touch this quarter. Oh, man, awful display from him so far. But you know he's going to keep working to try to turn it around. Now, here is Howard. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. <laughs> They're not messing around. Five of their last six buckets have come from the interior. Outside Irving. Pass to Durant. 4-3. Knocks down the triple. He's got 16. Wow, his first triple of the second half gives him two on the night. He's not making much of an impact. For him. And down it goes. Dunked it through off a beautiful setup. They were totally in sync on that play. Targeted the pass beautifully. Up top, Lopez. Irving for three. It's hauled in by the Sixers. Howard's got the glass covered here tonight. That's 11 boards for him. Here's Simmons. Ooh, another basket for him. He's 6 of 11 now. They're winning the battle down low by imposing their will. Simmons has gone 6 for 11 on the night from the field. You know, everybody falls in love with how Ben Simmons creates on offense. But as a defender, see Webb, he's top-notch as well. Oh, yeah, Simmons has a great Yo, sense for kicking Simmons. off passes and coming up with steals. The athletic frame lets him guard anybody, the kind of player that erases mismatches on defense. Oh, he faded back on that one to give himself some room. Embiid's got seven now in this quarter. It's been a clinical performance. He's played a huge role and, and has them in position to grab the W. Pass to Harden. Takes the three. The rebound by Ben Simmons. He just keeps firing from distance. I know he's trying to heat up, but at what cost? And here's Embiid. Milton up top. Defended by Harden. Simmons with it. Clock at six. And Harden with the block. And Harden sent a message to the D with the block, really showing his extraordinary athleticism on the defensive end. So Brooklyn going with almost an entire new group here. Green's checked in for Kevin Durant. Shamit comes in for Harris. Brown, he's checked in for Harden. And it's Dinwiddie in for Kyrie Irving. Dinwiddie outside. Pass to Shamit. Oh, Simmons with the block. To the right side. For three, Maxi. Walled in by Brown. And the Nets shooting just 31% in today's game. Not great. Now here's Lopez. Stripped away. And he's going for the lob. They're really in control on both ends of the floor right now. Forcing turnovers and finding easy points while the other guys struggle to keep up. Here's Shamit. What? No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Lopez, the screen on Simmons. There's the drive to stop the run. Can't get it to drop. Now the 76ers take it the other way. A minute 37 left in the third quarter. Good. And that basket makes him 8 for 14 for the game. These defenders really need to man up, particularly in the lane. Pass to Shaman. Fires the three. Drains the triple. Shamit's gotten himself going with a triple, his first basket of the game. Their strategy has been pretty simple here in the second half. Attack from three-point range. But it had to be these days, you need to stretch the floor somewhat to make everything else work. Now here's Curry. And Seth Curry is going to pick up the foul. That's his first foul of the game. 
I love great defense. Just quick to establish his feet, and he takes the hit. And the 76ers with some changes. Tobias Harris checked in for Howard, and it's Stiebel in for Simmons. Here's Dinwiddie. Pass to Shaman. Launches it. And again, Brooklyn with the triple. Lackluster defense, showing no desire to chase shooters off that line. Outside Tybal. 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Maxi. Hey, from beyond the arc. The shot won't fall. This scoring has not been there at all tonight. It tells you a lot about their team that they have the new in. Here's Shamit. And it's good for two. Shamit's got eight. The 76ers shooting the rock at a 46% rate since the start of the third. Here's Maxi. Out left to the wing. Here's Embiid. Oh, and the buzzer beater is good! Makes his selection just in time. Well done. Now that's the way you want to end a quarter with the momentum on your side. And three quarters of play in the books. This one's all but over already. Sixers ahead, opening up a huge gap. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in a moment. And it's time to bring up the State Farm assist to the game. You know, I'm kind of stoked that this was a choice because I love this pass. A remarkable find. He put his court vision on full display. Well, it's also called making a good read, understanding where everyone is and taking full advantage. Fantastic. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same for the first three quarters. So on the floor for Philadelphia. Joel Embiid is out there with Furkan Korkmaz. Then it's Maxi, then it's Matisse Thibault, and it's Poirier in at the five. With each year, Grant, it seems like we see more and more great players coming out of Europe. And that's so true, B.A. When you think about some of these great young stars, Doncic or Jokic and others, I mean, it speaks to how the game has become a global game. The NBA has marketed and sold this game all over the world for years, and now we're seeing the benefit of those efforts. And I'll tell you what, over 25% of the players in the league right now were born outside of the U.S. So it just illustrates the growth of the game, the success of the game, and the elite players from all over the world playing in the NBA today. So after making the first, he goes one for two. And we know Joel Embiid knows that he's one of the best in the game. You love it when he challenges other stars and goes right at them on the floor. Embiid is a true superstar and super personality in the league. Now here's Embiid. Six on the shot clock. For three, Maxi. But they recover it. And that's made a huge difference in this game, if you ask me. Their offensive rebounding has been sensational. Here's Poirier. Count that bucket. Grant, last season, MB declared himself the best player in the league. Not many echoed that statement. Yeah, B.A., most fans and pundits will disagree with MB. It's hard to make a case for him. But that's the mentality MB has to have as a superstar. So who knows? In a few years, it might be true. The 76ers shooting around 51%. That's a good number. A little over a minute of the fourth quarter gone now. To the inside. Here's Embiid. The rebound by the Nets. Here's Johnson. Going inside. And he's going to the line for two. The official saw contact while he was going up. 
Well, Grant, you played when teams didn't have a sophisticated method of managing players' minutes. I want to hear the Grant Hill thoughts on load management. Well, I'll tell you what, B.A., load management is the new wave in the NBA, and that is so valuable and important to a team. You factor in 82 games, uh, travel, uh, getting in late at night on the road, guys working out year-round. It's so important to think big picture as players uh, go throughout their career. So load management, the sophistication that's applied now is so important and critical, and I'm a little jealous. I wish they had that back when I played. <laughs> Having players available in crunch time and extending careers. Bradley, he's checked in for the Sixers. He's off on the second. 76ers have gotten just one shot to fall out of three attempts in the fourth. Bible on the wing. From 12 feet. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. So two free throws for him coming up. Take a break, take a break. Two shots. And he makes a first. Well, Grant, what do you think about the NBA lottery and how it affects teams moving forward? Teams that have terrible seasons the year prior. Yeah, B.A., it's so important for teams to have a chance to establish a foundation, to draft players who have a lot of runway in front of them and can be a part of that team's future for many, many years. You only get better a few ways, through free agency, through trades, and through the NBA draft lottery. And so if you're not a good team, chances are you're not going to sign a good player and you're not going to be able to trade for a good player. So the best way is through the NBA draft and give yourself some time as an organization and hope over the long haul you have a chance for great success. Look, he may not be thought of as big for a center, but with his ability to go vertical, he sure plays good. Outside Tybal. Out to the wing. The three. Rebounded by Johnson. Well, the Nets shooting just around 34% in this game so far. Up top, Brown. Inside. And that's out of bounds. Brooklyn will retain possession. He had the right idea. Just couldn't come up with the swipe. Yeah, you can tell he feels he should have had it still. The hustle was impressive. A touch under, two and a half minutes have passed now here in the fourth. Six to shoot. Here's Brown. And the shot no good. A bit short. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the fourth quarter. Pass to Bradley. Oh, they get a hand on it. Here's Johnson. Just about three minutes through the fourth and final quarter here. Knocks it down from distance. Shamit's got four points this quarter. He'll do some damage if they give him that shot. Don't give him a clean look. Get out there on him. Here's Bradley. Pass to Maxi. Fernando grabs the miss. He's done a lot of the little things to help put them in front. I mean, but his offense has not been there for the night. And the league working to clarify certain rules. See, Webb, when you talk about legal guarding position, are defenders given the benefit of the doubt enough when they go up vertically? Well, this is an offensive man game, you know. Uh, the, the league definitely uh, has given the advantage to the offensive players. And, and, and as a defender, so what? Uh, you know, you keep going, but you do play a price. As a defender, absorbing the contact, but, you know, sacrificing your body. If you ask most defenders, it should be rewarded, not punished. Here's Maxi. Pass to Poirier. Here's Bradley. Here's Milton. And he gets that one. 
gotta fight harder to get over those screens. Uh, we see this all too often. You have to be willing to put it. Here's Shamit. Driving in. Count that one. He's now five for eight. He's been a different player since halftime. Coming on strong now. For Philadelphia, they've gotten only two of six attempts to drop in the fourth. Pass to Bradley. Right side, Milton. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he drops the first. Now, Grant, you were involved in a sign-and-trade deal from Detroit to Orlando, but you don't see that tactic as much anymore. You know, you really don't, B.A., but there's a reason for that. First and foremost, players today have a lot more control over their destiny. And also, teams are not going to wait until an elite player is in the final year and they don't have a firm commitment and belief that that player will resign. In a lot of cases, teams will trade that elite player before he enters his last year of his deal for fear that they may lose him for nothing in free agency. Green in the post. Off target at the rim. Philadelphia has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the fourth quarter. Here's Korkmaz. Pass to Poirier. Outside Milton. Unloads from 13. Jump shot is good that time. Milton's got six here in the quarter. And he couldn't get an easier shot. The defense right now just looks defeated. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. You have to know the scouting report. He's a threat from out there. Here's Fernando. Here's Luau Cabarro. That three's off the mark. The 76ers have gotten three of seven attempts in this fourth quarter to fall. Here's Korkmaz. From down in the low post, it goes. Korkmaz has got his first two points. Brooklyn's got one of three to fall from downtown here in the fourth. To the left side wing. Pass to Johnson. And Graham, when you were playing, the game was a lot more physical. Do you miss those days? Maybe not as a player, but do you miss watching that brand of basketball? You know, I, I do miss a little bit of that time. There, there, there was a physicality that required a mental toughness to endure that. When you played against some of these teams, like the first team that comes to mind, the New York Knicks with Charles Oakley and Patrick Ewing, you were going to feel it at the end of that game. But it was just a, a fun time for me as a young player in this league. And, of course, anything I could do to be back out on the court playing, even in the physicality of the 1990s. I'd be happy to stick an elbow in your back. <laughs> okay, uh, Brian Oakley. I like that. <laughs> the 76ers have gotten four of nine shots to go in during this fourth quarter. Pass to Poirier. Over to the left wing. To the wing, right side. Clock at six. Here's Maxi. Green with the defensive effort. I don't think the D does good enough here, but something causes the miss. Here's Johnson. Pass to Shaman from deep. Ooh, he's found his rhythm. Seven for ten and counting. He's wrapped up his game in a big way this quarter. I don't think he likes it when they're trailing. Here's Maxi. Here's Korkmaz. And another miss by Philadelphia. Brooklyn has gone two of four from the perimeter here in the fourth quarter. 
And the pick and roll never more popular than it is today. C-Web is a big man setting that screen. Talk about your options and how to exploit them to the fullest. Well, we can go real quick because there's so many. It's how about the angle you set the screen at? You can slip, you can pop back, pinning your guard back to your back, going in slow, waiting for the cadence of the point guard, acting like you're going to set it on the right, but then you switch it over to the left, leaving the proper angle for the pass to reach you. And then once you catch the pass, look into the corners to either hit the corner man or go inside and dunk on for Brooklyn, they've gone 5 of 11 so far in the fourth. Pass to Johnson. Here's Shumpert. Outside for Green. Fires for three. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Given his range, you'd expect him to capitalize on that open. On the wing, Milton. Shoots from 12. Second chance shot. And that one goes in as he's fouled. It'll be three points if he converts the free throw. One shot. And the free throw, no good. You know, Grant, a few years ago, the NBA moved up the trade deadline to before All-Star Weekend. So it's had some effects. The trade deadline is earlier. There's the buyout market involved as well. Teams really can change their roster in different ways. Yeah, they really can change their roster. And that's important for teams as they prepare for the stretch run ending the season post All-Star Weekend. But the bottom line, I think it helps the GMs and the front offices because you know what? They can enjoy their All-Star Weekend now. Before, they had to wait till after All-Star Weekend to execute a trade. They get it done now, and then now they can enjoy their week off during the All-Star break. Ah, now we get the real story. <laughs> Very nice. Philadelphia's got nothing to fall from outside the arc here in the fourth. 0 for 4. Pass to Korkmaz. Pulls it from 20. Fernando grabs the miss. Fernando's got his fourth rebound in this one. They're searching for a way to score. Yeah, buckets have been very tough to come by. Here's Johnson. It's time for him to start looking for other options. They can't let him keep shooting. His touch is gone. Pass to Korkmaz. Shot from 12. Offensive board. And that one's good. A nice job on the glass as they picked up two on the second effort. Second chance points are always painful. Have to make the effort to box out. Yeah, that's what's frustrating because you did the job defensively to get the stop and then you gave it right back. Here's Johnson. Fires in the triple. And their strategy is obvious. Manufacture looks from outside the arc. You see more teams doing this now. We all are firmly entrenched in the era of the three ball. Pass to Korkmaz. 1.49 left in the fourth quarter here. 11 feet out. Bradley misses. Well, the Nets shooting just 38% here in the fourth. Here's Shumpert. With the drive. A shot by Johnson, no good. And for Philadelphia, they're shooting 33%. This hasn't been their quarter. And what a complete performance we saw from them. A dominant win in every way for the 76ers. And it was a big-time performance across the board. They looked like they were having fun out there, Grant. <laughs> yeah, B.A., it was almost like watching a cat play with a mouse. I mean, they did pretty much anything they wanted to do out there today. Now, you have to extend that defense. I mean, you really have to stay connected to him at all times. Yeah, I mean, that's not a guy you can leave alone. Not if you have any hope of closing the gap. <laughs> that's how you up the ante. Come right back at him. <laughs> yeah, man, let's talk about it. The 
great competition going on. That's what makes a matchup like this so much fun to watch. Pass to Maxi. 43 seconds left in the game. This is what winning is all about. Playing your best when it matters most. Well, this is what guys play for, and when it pans out like this, it's a great fit. Here's Johnson. And it goes. As the official calls the foul, count it, and he'll shoot one more at the line. Simmons has checked in for the Sixers. And that one misses. Philadelphia with the ball. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Out of bounds. It'll go to the Nets. Here's Shumpert to the wing on the left. Pass to Fernando. Here's Johnson. Here's the second effort. So no problem for Philadelphia as they get the win. To walk into enemy territory and deliver a performance like that, that says a lot about this squad. They really came in looking confident and didn't let anything shake them. This is what a dominant team looks like. And now let's check in with Allie LaForce with the player of the game. Allie. Joel, congratulations. A quality win tonight. What enabled you to secure it? Oh, we played. We were tough tonight. We won soft. Uh, we shared the ball defensive and we were really good. And that's what we got to do the rest of the season. The toughness showed and paid off. Thanks, Joel. Allie, thank you as always. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. Alongside Chris Weber, Allie LaForce, and Grant Hill, and the entire 2K Sports crew, this is Brian Anderson thanking you for joining us. We'll see you next time.